Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Surbhi Sharma. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 17th of October. Air quality in Indian capital plunges to very poor. Britain's Prince William calls for climate change action on glacier visit in Pakistan. And Gotabaya lied about Sri Lanka's war victory, says Premadasa. And now for all the details. Dust and smoke continue to blanket Indian capital New Delhi on Thursday as air quality index in several areas fell to very poor category. The government announced details of its odd even traffic rule from next month aimed at combating pollution. Dust and smoke continued to blanket Indian capital New Delhi and its nearby regions on Thursday as air quality index in several areas fell to the very poor category. Air quality hovered at very poor scale as the share of both PM10 and PM2.5 was reported shooting up. Fine particulate matter or PM2.5 is an air pollutant that is a concern for people's health when levels in the air are high. Residents in early hours share their ordeal and the difference in the air quality with every breath. For the last four or five days, I uh, feel that there is explicit uh, change in the uh, air quality here. Uh, when you breathe in, you feel that there is a change. Meanwhile, Delhi's ruling Amatmi Party government announced details of its odd even traffic rules aimed at combating pollution. The scheme entails car with odd and even number plates to run on alternate days. Delhi Chief Minister Arvind K. Jival also informed the measures taken by his government to control pollution. We are taking all the steps. One thing we have told you, Diwali collective will be made. We are going to masks. We have started the night vigilance. There are 16 teams that have been released. And the construction and demolition waste, which is because of the dust, the burning of waste, Delhi witnesses a spike in pollution levels every winter owing to a change in meteorological conditions combined with local emissions and the effect of crop residue burning in neighboring provinces. An Indian delegation on Wednesday hit out at Pakistan for raising the Kashmir issue at the Inter-Parliamentary Union Assembly in Serbia, saying it is ironic that a state responsible for countless terrorist attacks in Jammu and Kashmir is trying to masquerade as a champion of Kashmiris. Indian parliamentarian Shashi Tharoor on Wednesday hit out at Pakistan for raising the Kashmir issue at the Inter-Parliamentary Union or IPU Assembly in Serbia, saying it is ironic that a state responsible for countless terrorist attacks in Jammu and Kashmir is trying to masquerade as a champion of Kashmiris. Speaking for the Indian delegation, which was headed by Om Birla, the Speaker of Lower House of Indian Parliament, Tharoor said, Parliament of India will not allow these malicious efforts to succeed. He said the Indian delegation rejects Pakistan's raising of an issue internal to India and extraneous to their discussions for narrow political gains. Jammu and Kashmir is an integral part of India. It is ironic that a state that is responsible for inflicting countless cross-border terrorist attacks in Jammu and Kashmir is trying to masquerade as the champion of Kashmiris. They are not. These malicious efforts will not be allowed to succeed by the Parliament of India. We expect better from parliamentarians than vituperative mudslinging. The abrogation of special status granted to Jammu and Kashmir by the Indian government in August evoked strong reactions from Pakistan and it has been trying to internationalize the issue. But New Delhi has asserted the move was its internal matter. Tharoor said 
that it is absurd to hear fulminations about respect for human rights from Pakistan, which is home to 130 UN designated terrorists and 25 terrorist entities listed by the UN. In is from Pakistan. Britain's Prince William and his wife Kate, the Duchess of Cambridge, on Wednesday visited a melting glacier in Pakistan to witness impact of climate change. Prince William called for immediate action to tackle climate change. Britain's Prince William and his wife Kate on Wednesday flew by helicopter to visit a melting glacier in the Hindu Kush mountain range, witnessing firsthand the impact of climate change their five-day trip to Pakistan is seeking to highlight. They visited the northern tip of the Chiatibo Glacier, where a climate change expert explained how it was retreating. Pakistan's northern glaciers and those throughout the Hindu Kush and Himalayan region are an important water store for 250 million people and another 1.6 billion rely on rivers originating in the mountains, putting many communities at risk as global temperatures rise. And we've seen all around the world now, the young are getting very engaged in what's going on. And I think it's fantastic that we can, can all come together and, and really have a very good conversation about what we need to do. And, and the action needs to happen very soon because a lot of people rely on this. And if we take too long about this, we will lose many of the precious things we care about. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge also visited a settlement of the Kalash people, a small indigenous group in the country's northern Chitral region. They wore traditional headgear and colourful scarves and watched a musical performance accompanied by drums. The couple then went sightseeing on foot, entering a craft shop and browsing the items on display and asked how the weather affected business during the snowy season. In is from Afghanistan, at least three people were killed and several wounded in a suicide car bomb blast in eastern Afghanistan on Wednesday. The Taliban claimed responsibility for the attack. Two police officers and a civilian were killed and 43 others were wounded on Wednesday after a car bomb blast rocked Alisheng district in Afghanistan's eastern Laghman province. The attack claimed by the Taliban took place after a suicide bomber set off explosives in his vehicle near a police station in Alisheng. Those among the injured were police personnel and children who were studying in a mosque when the blast occurred. The injured were shifted immediately to a hospital in provincial capital, Mehtar Lam city. The explosion also damaged the buildings and nearby houses. Over the past months, Afghanistan has witnessed a series of terror attacks. At least 14 people were killed and 37 others wounded on October 7 after a Taliban roadside bomb struck a bus carrying army recruits in neighboring Nangarhar province. As political campaigns gain momentum in poll-bound Sri Lanka, presidential candidate Sajitha Premadasa took a jibe at his opponent Gotabaya Rajapaksa, saying he created a fake identity by claiming the credit for war victory for the Rajapaksa family in the past. Presidential candidate Sajid Premadasa took a jibe at his opponent Sri Lanka Podujana Perumuna or SLPP presidential candidate Gotabaya Rajpaksa as political campaigns gained momentum in Polbon Island nation. Premadasa said that Gotabaya created a fake identity by claiming the credit for war victory for the Rajpaksa family in the past, but had to reveal the reality recently. Speaking at a rally on Wednesday, Premadasa noted that the true leader of the war was none other than former army commander Sarat Fonseca. He made the remarks in reference to a statement made by Gotabaya recently that he was not the one who led the war in the north against the Tamil Tiger rebels, but the then army commander Field Marshal Sarat Fonseca. In November 2011, Fonseca was sentenced to three years in jail for saying that Tamil rebels who surrendered had been killed on the orders of Godabaya, the then Defence Secretary. According to UN reports, some 40,000 civilians may have been killed in the final months of the 26-year civil war in the island nation. More news from Sri Lanka. Sri Lankan President Maitripala Srisena recently inaugurated a Wana Ropa National Tree Planting Programme which is in line with the United Nations Climate Change Convention to increase the country's forest cover.
Sri Lankan government has implemented several special projects this year to increase the country's forest density. Sri Lankan President Maithiripala Sirisena recently inaugurated Wanaropa National Tree Planting Program in outskirts of capital Colombo. The Wanaropa program is in line with the United Nations Climate Change Convention to increase the country's forest cover to 32% by year 2030. Siri Sena during the event highlighted that forest density had reduced significantly in the past few decades, posing a severe threat to habitats. He, however, said that due to programs implemented by his government to protect the environment and increase the forest resources in the last four years, the country's forest density had increased. Siri Sena also signed declarations to name several districts including Nuwara Ilia, gazetting 9,900 hectares as protected forest and 14,800 hectares of mangroves as protected and reserve forest. Several prominent tour operators visited India's Jammu and Kashmir on Wednesday to assess the ground reality days after a travel advisory requesting tourists and pilgrims to curtail their stay in the region was withdrawn. They expressed hope that they will see a boom in tourism during the upcoming tourist season. A group of prominent tour operators on Wednesday visited India's Jammu and Kashmir to witness the ground reality days after a travel advisory that requested tourists and pilgrims to curtail their stay in the region was withdrawn. The decision to lift the travel advisory by the federal government has been welcomed by the tourist sector stakeholders who expressed hope that they will see a boom in tourism during the upcoming tourist season. Jammu and Kashmir has witnessed a major decline in tourism ever since government issued a security alert over possible terrorist attacks before it made the big announcement of revoking the special status of the region in August. So I felt good and I can talk more confidently with my clients and sell it. Because one thing is that you have seen someone sell it and one thing is that you have taken your experience. As you said, there is a setback. उस सेटबैक के वजह से दिवाली और क्रिसमस टूरिस्ट सीजन वेस्ट नहीं जाना चाहिए। टूरिज्म सेक्टर इस डी बैकबोन ऑफ कश्मीर्स इकोनॉमी, ऑफ्टन कॉल्ड डी पैराडाइज़ ऑन एर्थ। इट इस फेमस फॉर इट्स लैंडस्केप्ड फ्लावरिंग गार्डेन्स, क्रिस्टल क्लियर लेक्स एंड मैग्निफिसेंट स्ट्रक्चर्स। शिकारा Eating out for people in India's eastern Bhubaneswar city is no more just about trying different types of cuisines, but is now an experience of innovative dining. A first of its kind restaurant in the city has deployed two robots that interact with customers and serve food. In an attempt to offer its customers an innovative dining experience, a restaurant in Bhubaneswar city of India's Odisha province has deployed robots to serve food. Robo Chef, a first of its kind restaurant in the city, has two robots named Champa and Chameli that interact with customers and serve food. Both the robots are made in India and function as per commands and can also speak multiple languages, including Odia, the official language of Odisha. So basically it works on radar based technology, it doesn't have a specified path, it, you give them command and it just roams around and that is how it is unique. I have seen the RoboChef Hotel first and I have seen two robots here, Champa and Chameli. And they came and 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 came. The robots Champa and Chameli have a voice operated system to greet the customers and welcome them to the eatery. People visiting the restaurant are also feeling elated with the experience and are praising the unique concept. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. Air quality in Indian capital plunges to very poor. Britain's Prince William calls for climate change action on glacier visit in Pakistan. And Gotabaya lied about Sri Lanka's war victory, says Premadasa.
Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsLine.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianNewsLine and follow us on Twitter at SAsianNewsLine. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.